Hey guys, and welcome back. So, this will be part two of Let's Play Shadow Man. When we last left off, we just reached Dead Side. And fighting our first enemies, we find out that the apocalypse is upon us. And there's five serial killers at the heart of it, along with another being who calls himself Legion. Yeah, we've just arrived in Dead Side to begin our quest in stopping the evil forces from bringing about the end of all things. Over here, Michael. Ah, uh, here we go. We meet Jaunty. Hello there, Michael. How is that treating you? Jaunty, kindly refer to me as Shadow Man. Michael Lawai has no place here in Dead Side. Whatever, Mick. It's good to see you again. Seems like simply ages since I last set my eyes on your happy, smiling mug. The feeling's mutual. I suppose you've been away dallying with the old battle axe, giving her one with some of that righteous voodoo so she can stay forever young? Something like that. She's been filling your head with her fated pillow talk again, I'll bet. Doomsday in an army giddy until you're drunk with the stuff. She did happen to mention a certain prophetic dream she's been having. Did she now? Well, for once I think the owl witch might be right. See that bloody big black tower yonder? How could I miss it? Well, old Bruegel, the medieval painter blokey, was just telling me the other day that he thought it looked remarkably like a picture he once did. Is that Peter Bruegel? No, Seamus, his distant Irish cousin. Anyways, he was quite shocked so he was at the terrible mess that bloody thing's made. Appeared now out of nowhere and tearing its way through the place like there's no tomorrow. Which, given what Nettie's saying, might not be too far from the truth. Any idea what's going on in there? Nope, and I shan't be knocking on the front door to find out, neither. All I'd say is, if there's something wicked heading this way, it'll be coming from in there. Nettie mentioned the Dark Souls. Can you tell me any more about them? I'm afraid I'll have to reply in the negative again, Michael. Suffice it to say, Nettie's told me that they're bloody powerful, well nigh indestructible, and shouldn't fall into the wrong hands. Any idea where they might be? What am I, a Dark Soul travel guide now? I suppose you could try all of the ancient sacred places down amongst the whalers and shiverers. I just hope that none of them souls have ended up in that filthy big black tower. From what Nettie was saying, some of them already have. Which is all the more reason for me to be pushing on. Open the gates, Jaunty. Places to go, people to see, eh, Michael? Just open the gates, Jaunty. Did I ever tell you about the time me and Attila the Hun were playing skittles with the guillotine heads of the French aristocracy? Jaunty. All right, all right, keep your bloody hair on. Which, looking at your shining bonds, may prove to be rather difficult. Open sesame! And if you be wanting to pop by and chat about it, I'll still be here. It's just a shame we can't share it. Lap of the hearts when we get our boy alarm, peak, and fire. I don't drink with snakes. There you go, there's John Dick. It's a weird character, he doesn't do much, he just sits there, you can chat to him a few times, same way with Nettie, you can go back and chat to her a few times. Um, he's a little less, less helpful, and uh, he doesn't really do much for you, so he's there, and he's the, the, the guard of the gate. But again, his main role I think is just to kind of bring a little bit of light humour into the game. Uh, so yeah, these are the wheelers and shivers that John was talking about. So yeah, every time you kill an enemy, they will drop the health. Which is okay. You know, I'll keep you going. And as you might have seen there, I did get some of my health taken. It's very easy to lose health in this game. You just gotta be careful what you do. Keep an eye out. Like, make sure you're watching all the right shit all the time. So. Alright, so this is one of those things that I was talking about that you have to keep coming back to, so I'm gonna make a quick note. Gates. 
Uh, it's gonna call us a drum kit. So yeah, this will be for important for way later on in the game when we have to come back and revisit other areas. I don't want to be running around not knowing what I'm doing. So it's a lot easier to make note and then you can refer back to it later on when you have the right equipment to proceed. Nope, don't talk. Thank you. Sometimes the targeting doesn't quite work or targets the wrong enemies, but that's just that's one of those things just gonna have to work around. There are some flying enemies in this first area. So be careful of. Most of them will leave your nose until later, later stages, but not all of them. Yeah, so those platforms at the bottom are another type of gate for later on. And I'm actually going to make note of this one too. I'm gonna call these floor tiles. I know they're not very accurate, but it's easy for me to refer to because there's nothing else I'm gonna think of as a floor tile except for these ones. Got it. I don't need to record everything, the likes of these blood flaw falls, later on you will be able to pick, um, climb them, but I don't need to worry about that until later on, and if I, when I do get the ability to, I will be revisiting all the areas of the game, and you will find out, you, you can, if you, I haven't actually shown you, but if you go on to the bear, in a second, you can actually teleport between areas or well, travel between areas. So, if you go into his bear, at the minute we've only got two locations, um, but you will get more as the game progresses. And as you might as you've seen there, it tells you how many Govi, and I believe that's the Oh yeah, that's so the number on the right is the total number of Dark Souls you've collected and the ones on the left is how many per area. Um, you can't actually get any for a bit. The first one you can pick up is scripted, I believe. So We'll be coming to that later on. But as I said, it, there's no need to write down the likes of those blood falls because it's, they're hard to miss. You'll be revisiting the areas anyway, so. Killing enemies will also become a lot easier later on. But at the minute, the so called Lord of Death side is actually pretty weak, as you can see. They made him actually almost too weak in the beginning. Know, in order to live up his reputation. Oh, I see. They don't always have to have line of sight um, to take souls to take your life from you. However, they do need an initial line of sight if you're going to read it. So they do need to make, you know, they do, do need to be able to see you in the first place in order to attack you, but if you run around a corner, or if you just hit around a corner, they can still hit you at times. Each 
weapon has its own range as well. The shadow gun. So this main one um, actually increases range as you charge it up. And at the minute we can't charge it just because we don't have any power in it. And you gain you gain power by absorbing the dark souls. Another thing about this game is it's not one for being fair. <laughs> I mean, it's always manageable, and it's always doable, but in terms of there's some areas where it will literally try to do everything it can to kill you. And you're just gonna have to try and adapt. Where the keys are really fun. Actually I'm not sure, can I? Change that. Uh, sound effect on it. Uh, figure controls. Um, holsters left alt. I actually have it as enter, but anyway. Camp function vendor. Um, Deleting page down. I'm not going to be using those keys. But that's fine, I don't really need to. I can use my, the one I've got. So I can't, by the looks of it, configure a mouse. Oh well, I didn't know you could use a mouse. Um, I'm actually going to disable that. Some of it's just going to confuse me swapping between the keyboard, keyboard and the mouse. The keyboard's fine. Anyway, I'll continue on. Yeah, the keyboard's not hard to use. Oh, no button. So we got our first taste of the next enemy. Kill me if I don't. There we go. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. It's that easy to die. Those enemies will tear you apart. I'm actually gonna drop a save here real quick. Um so yeah. I just said that the keyboard's easy enough to use and I mess up the buttons. But that's what I mean about the targeting. If they get too close to you or if they manage to come too far, like like if they run parallel with you and run too far off to the side, you can't actually lose you're targeting and then it's because of the controls it's awkward to try and get it back but most enemies do have um, a ranged attack which you just have to be careful of and it's the ranged attack that stops you from being able to actually like efficiently use your first person because when you're in the first person you can't use you can't move around and they're also pretty smart in the fact that they will run underneath you if you're on a ledge like this and they will like purposefully avoid you If you might have heard there, Shadow Man said damn. What that means is each enemy when you weaken them enough will like drop to the ground. And at that point you can like you can, that's when you can kill them, finish them off. Uh, and if he says damn it means you've missed your chance. And like you've injured them and they've just got back up. Carried on. I can get some health from here. I should be in a better position to fight them off. There you go, so see he fell over, I kind of hunched over, that's because he was already hurt from before. And there we go. Got it. 
So these guys aren't too bad if you fight them at a distance. Just try not to get them too try not to get too close to you. And obviously avoid their spit. We'll finish off searching down here, because I believe maybe a few more. Yeah, there's someone. Another thing, if you see um, a little pool of blood, which basically takes place for water on the dead side, then chances are there's going to be enemies hiding in there. So just be careful of that. There is um, water physics in this game, whereby if you're if you're only like ankle deep in water, it's fine. You can still move around. You can still roll. If you move full speed, you can roll, and you can do other stuff. But it's when you get to like waist deep, then it's like your movement slows down. What you can and can't do changes. I'm gonna back off the edge here. And that's what I mean by the game intentionally tries to kill you at times because it'll do stuff like that. It'll spawn enemies in right in front of you and when you're on a wire. And it's either you pull your gun out where you can't move and they'll spit at you and I can't target him. Back off a bit here. Hit them. Hmm. Yeah, once you have target lock on them, it's actually easier. Oh, it's actually easier to maintain the target lock for the further they go away. Strange. So the maximum range of your weapon is actually lar larger than what you initially think, just because once you have uh, lock on, you will it does give you a little bit more distance. Enemies also respawn in each area. I don't think if they respawn while you're there. I think you have to be so like you have to be a certain distance away from the area that they belong in before they respawn. We have to be like one area ahead. Come back right here. And yeah, all all levels are designed. Well, most levels are designed this way, right, where you can actually just go everywhere. Well, I say most levels. It's not all that bad once you get your head around it and you kind of know where you're going. Another benefit to um, the terrain is these guys can't go over gaps and they won't jump off the ledge. Well, most of the time they will jump off the ledge. I think if they if there's a glitch where they just run a bit too far and then they will fall off, but it's not an intended outcome. Was E action? No, E was not action. What was action? Oh, entry was action. Right. That's going to link back around to where I was. So I take it this will lead to the next area. The start's actually gone surprisingly well. I think um, the last time I played this, it went a lot worse. And then you get these ones. I don't. I can't remember their exact name. Is it? Is it? Coffin gates, maybe. Um, basically, you find out in the story as it progresses. And I think you'll actually find out here. Is this 
Yes. I'll, let, I'll just read this. I'll let you know. Like someone left me a note. Pick this up. There we go. The prophecy. Although centuries have passed by the time that you read this note, know that I greet you both as a friend and as a brother. For, for I, in my time, have also borne the burden that is the mar mask of shadows. Know then that I constructed these passageways, the paths of shadow, as pathways through the place known as Dead Side, so that we and those who also bear the mask might bring order to this realm and traverse it without hindrance. In my time, I have gathered and categorized catalogued even many of the ancient artifacts of power some of which reside in these chambers however i fear that i must leave my work incomplete a seed of darkness has come to the realm more powerful than has been felt in centuries so i find it necessary to seal the paths of shadow lest they find the artifacts within them fall into lest they and the artifacts within them fall into the hands of evil <coughs> The task of securing this passageways has been an immense labour, and I fear that with my weakening powers these outer gates have not been secured as strongly as those deeper within the paths. Know then that excuse me, sorry, know then that the way ahead shall require much greater strength than that which brought you here. In addition to the catalog the catalogue of artifacts I find enclosed enclosed Les Cartes du Profiti. The prophecy has spoken to the ancients by the Loa. I fear that the darkness I sense on this day might be that which Les Cartes speak of, but fate has made it my charge not to challenge that darkness. Instead, my labour is to secure these passageways so that, come the time of the prophecy, when evil shows its true form, they may be reopened in their, and their relics uncovered. To great Les Cartes, which basically shows how many dark souls you need to progress in each level. So as you can see there, it's one, two, four, eight, eight. And what that, it doesn't mean that you need eight to open up those gates. It's you need one to get to level one, then you need two more to progress to the second one, then four more to get to the third, then eight more to get to that one, and so on and so forth. These are, I believe, called the ultimate being... Long before man and shadow creatures of souls of evil did descend upon the worlds, immortals they were led by the one who is many, he who bears the mouth of blood. After the long, longest of battles he was defeated and banished to a place beyond the worlds, and the dark souls of his armies were sealed into Govi. And the sisters of blood were entrusted with the Govi, and for many lifetimes the dark souls lay under their protection. And then the one who is many did return from the place beyond worlds. Under his banner did he unite the madmen and killers, and they did build asylum in the world of the dead. And sending his minions throughout the world of the dead, he gathered the dark souls that were not under the sisters' protection. Using their dreaded power, he summoned the five mortal men to do his bidding, and they built for him gateways of souls into the world of men. So the five did appear in a dream, so the sorceress and their lizard king did announce the apocalypse with the cries of a thousand men. And in her darkest hour, the sorceress did call upon the man of shadow. And the serpent did guard the marrow gates until the shadow returned to the world of the dead. And then, thence did the serpent become his advisor. Basically explaining the story so far, and then you get to this point. For the man, for the man of shadow did open the coffin gates, the ark, and... For the first time in 1,100 years where the paths of shadow walk. So basically it's 100 years since the last guy, the one that wrote the start of that first note, um, sealed them all up. And here we go. The man of shadow did break the sister's spell in the Govi and in taking the Dark Souls power he did unite within him. And that's an easier um, little diagram to work from than the tally marks because it tells you the exact number you need for each one. With the greater powers, the man of shadow finally entered asylum and did find gateways within that le that led to the world of men. And he passed beyond them and did confront the five, but in the broad light of day he did fall to them. And the sorceress fell into a deep trance, her powers exhausted, and a shadow did fall upon the world of men. And Legion took the power of the souls into him. The end. 
and then you got these are the different um, pieces of, piece of equipment that you can gather throughout the game. You got the baton, the blade which pierces the ether and carries the spirit through it. That you can either shoot a little thing of fire with it, or you can use it to teleport. And you may have seen that little pedestal thing that it's on. There's a similar one to that, which you may have seen in the live side, the little by the church. Uh, we'll show that later on. You get the flambeau, bearer of the voodoo flame. Again, you can just throw fire with that. The marteau, that which sounds the rada drums. The rada drums are what you seen earlier on when I called it the drum gate. You have the calabash, the story of the sacred veve. Veve is the floor tiles, basically. That's a bit, it just it becomes a hand grenade. You drop it and you run away and then it blows up. You have to be careful of that though because it's a very big explosion. The Asan, sacred rattle of the mambo. Again, shoots fire. Hang on, what was... Um, better the video for them. I think one's just better version of the other. I can't, or is that something different? I may be mistaken about that one, by the way. Don't quote me. Um, Poing, to climb the falls of blood. Yep, you get those bangles later on. And sing, that which protects, it becomes a shield. Um, the Eclipser, the bringer of night, releasing the shadow into the world of man. And that's divided into three parts. You got Le Solel, brother sun, La Lune, sister moon, and La Lame, the power that binds. Only the most powerful may read this book of secrets. We, I do believe we, you can find that later on. It's the Book of Shadows, is what it's called. Um, that, that actually, that's you get secrets for the game itself. Um, there's nothing crazy. It's the likes of like Big Head mode and Funky Light mode and that kind of thing. So it's not, it's not that bad. It doesn't do much. Anyway, the sacred marks given in trials by Les Seurs de Sang as protection from the elemental fire. And then, that he may grasp fire yet feel no pain. That's two different ones there, as you see. The one, the one that he can grasp fire and feel no pain, you get the tattoos on his arms. And then the sacred marks given to the trials uh, as protection of elemental fire covers an entire body. You'll get that later on. And then the last one is that he may walk on bur over burning coals. These ones you'll get later on. Um, we'll work on about that later on. And then he may be consumed by fire, yet harm shall not come to him. Oh, sorry there. Yeah, the Les Gad, as you see in, on the actual card itself, is a trial of three. That's not what it means, but that's basically what it says. And you got Gad Toucher, Gad Marcher, I believe, and Gad. That's his Nagare, or something. I don't know. Anyway, and this is what you see Les Cado. Offerings to the Loa on the altars of life, living beyond the wasteland, 100 Kado made as an offering to the Loa shall increase the strength of a man's spirit. It gives you an extra bar of health, basically. And there you go, so it's another little helpful book. And I'm stuck on the pedestal. There we go. It's very easy to get caught in cur um, terrain in this game. So you just have to be very careful. And I believe up here is our first movie to interact with. It may not be the first one you can get overall, but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to make enough of a difference to change anything. I do believe this is the first one you can get. And there you go. Of the Dark Souls, I yeah, so you see that whole uh, purple light show means that you've leveled up. If you absorb a soul and it's not worth, if it's not worthy of a level up, then it'll just be a smaller, uh, smaller wee cutscene. But you'll notice the difference. This, as you've seen there, the God Toucher allows you to open these. So this is so um, prophecy chamber, I believe this is called. Toucher again. There we go. Make a way note of that one. And we should go and open this game. Now that we have a level one power, we can. I 
activate this door. And it'll open. He will say that every time you open the gate, so uh, don't worry about it. He'll look at you still eventually. And that is about it for this episode. So next time we will progress through that gate and see what's on the other side. Effectively get to the first level as such. It's kind of it's basically the end of the tutorial. There's nothing else left. And there you go. So thank you all for watching. Please like if you liked it. Obviously, uh, let me know what you liked about it. Um, how I can improve constructive criticism at its best, please. And yeah, so I shall hopefully see you again in the next time. So thank you for watching and see you then.